and we're back um all right so i went and took a nap um i took a walk just sort of generally recharged a bit um thought about things a tiny bit but um mostly coming back fresh um over abstraction is a foolish trap to fall into um, I'm pulling out these string modules for basically no reason when it's incredibly easy to do it later. Um, if I'm thinking about what things need to be global and what things need to be localized, that's probably something that's going to change over time as my understanding of the software changes over time. So I should be prioritizing the most straightforward implementation first that allows me to make those decisions and make those changes um, much much faster and much easier suffice to say we are going to do we're going to jump into here and we're going to leave extractor out because that seems fine but now we are going to just delete this file let's just get rid of that All right, and we're gonna do all of our stuff straight in here in this graph thing. And we're gonna get rid of graph. Um, I'm also starting to think more about implementations and this whole abstracting this down into a JavaScript thing um, or into a, a extracting the output down into a pure um, JSON representation. Which obviously that's something that needs to be able to happen at some point. And the operations for manipulating that JSON should be straightforward enough that like the JSON should actually be good enough. Like the JSON representation should be good enough to work with this and think about it. Um, I'm not going to worry about that too much i actually want to take some time to just um mess around with this idea of, of generating different types of blocks and allowing different types of na uh, names but um that's going to come soon possibly during this session possibly during the the next session uh is i'm going to to rewrite that json structure part of that as well is this idea of Part of that as well is this idea of um, what the test looked like. Hmm. Emacs is weird with this kind of stuff. Yeah, so now I'm back in here. Which window am I? Now I'm in window two. It's like these got, no, and I'm in window one. Very, very rarely the window sessions will just kind of mess up here. I'm not going to worry about it right now. But part of this as well is this idea of like this thing, when I look at this, I'm like, well, I should be able to just test the output of JSON. Like, why do I need to? Why do I need to build some kind of complicated structure even up here? Like, why do I need to build some kind of complicated structure to test this instead of just calling JSON to string on it? And the reason is, like, JSON to string wouldn't work with this um, because I wouldn't be able to actually test that the references were set up the way that I wanted them to be set up. For anything even trivially complicated, JSON wouldn't actually. I couldn't actually parse out the JSON. I think that's silly. Like, I think it's silly not to be able to just... The structure should be more simplistic than that. Um, anyway. Grab a sip of water, and then I am actually going to stop talking. We're going to jump back over here, and I'm just going to kind of code for a little while.
Just gonna take a sec to jump over to like Regex 101 or something and um, double check that I'm doing this correctly. I I always it's always even if I'm feeling confident about something, it's always a good it's always good to to just double check um, because there's so many stupid bugs that that you can get from from not checking Regex.
Yep, that's what I thought it was. All right. So we are searching up until the first space or the first new line. And then we are stripping that. Then we are stripping that out and, and working with the rest of it. And I'll worry about these constants later, or these constants later.
So, um, just from this, we've learned a couple of things. Um, I've learned that I need to have better error handling. Let's stick an at to do in here. I've learned um, that I need to throw some constants in here. And there's probably all of this stuff is connected. So probably having these constants also means like defining what the key codes are for them. That kind of stuff would actually be kind of useful. Now, it's not enough for us to just say what node the previous was. We also need to know what type it was. So previous can't just be we also need to know what the previous type was. Um, so let's clean that up a little bit. We'll have to clean that up a little bit in the future. But, um, again, don't, you should not over abstract, pre abstract, I guess is the thing. This is something that we can clean up later. I'm not going to worry about it. So, I do want the source to be formatted as a string literal. Not not as a string literal, but just as a literal string. I don't want the source to be reparsed. So, um, when we are looking at the previous node, we basically want to, we do want to say like, okay, our source equals
there are a couple of scenarios I want to be able to handle. I want to be able to handle this should take everything from here. No, I guess this should take everything from here, including the new line. The new lines will get formatted out if it, if necessary, but but well, this won't actually. This will be stuck in here as a new line. Um, because you could also do that's completely legal. And in which case, I do want to grab everything here. So I guess it is quite literally everything in between those two lines. Now, let me make sure that I have that information. When I return a comment, I want to make sure that I have not just the line number, I guess. In fact, the line number is probably the wrong thing. I want the literal index. Yeah, line is, I think, the wrong. I think the wrong thing here. Well, but hold on a second. Let's. These tests are almost certainly going to fail. Um, <laughs> yeah, everything blew up very, very quickly because I was in the middle of refactoring that. Oh, I was in the wrong layout. In fact, where did this layout even... The, this layout is for the proof of concept, and I've mirrored it over here... So Emacs wasn't being stupid. I was being stupid. Meh. Good enough. All right. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of stuff in here that's not actually going to work very well. But I want to check really quickly. Let's just open up a shell. Um, I just want to check really quickly and see what gets returned for this abstractor. So if I do like function What are you talking about? Can't find utils extractor. Where what directory am I in? I am in the wrong directory. All right. Yeah, uh, good enough. Come on. Don't be dumb. All right, there we go. Cool. I 
Oh, come on. So location for this is 38. Location is the character. Oh, that's excellent. Let me make sure that that is... Sorry, uh, one, yeah, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 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 everything I wanted. Right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Comment dot, comment dot end should be 30. Okay, yeah. All right, never mind. Uh, false alarm. This is actually going to be quite easy. So does that look roughly correct? If a code block exists, we're going to slice through the entire source. We're going to split it by the new line. We're going to append a block type, so that becomes a line of text, and then we're going to join it back on, and then we're going to append it to the previous block. And then, Then we are going to return the previous. Um, that is almost correct.
Uh, what hasn't happened that needs to happen is that you also need to uh, add the other stuff. Yeah, which means we do want this to be Yeah. And last but not least, we do actually want this comment.txt as well because you can do stuff like um, you can actually do this. And that text will get appended after the fact, so we do need to pay attention to it now. But now this looks, but now this looks basically good for that. Um, we do need to say else. The problem with code is like <laughs> the problem with code is that if you have a code block, we always we always want to return null. That's like a sort of repetitious See now this starts to not look as clean. Now this starts to look pretty dirty actually. Now this starts to actually just look pretty dirty. And maybe, oh my goodness, Emacs. And maybe, like, at some point, you start to question, like, you start to question if you're if you're headed in the right direction with this. I mean, previous type is still going to be code for this, though. That's the thing. If I'm tracking previous type very, very straightforward, in a very, very straightforward way, like, it's still going to be code if it's literally just reading off the previous previous type. In fact, the only reason why I'd want previous type to exist is basically, like, it would be better to say in code. And then suddenly this stop starts to look a little bit better. It's quite literally, append doesn't need to care about anything. It just needs to say like, hey, if I'm in an open block, don't return anything at all. So now this is much more localized. Type equals code, we're basically saying if I'm in an open block, and then at the end here we're just going to return null. Now we do want these things to be able to set the open block, so there's like a weird thing that we're basically saying.
Like, where does this go? Because so far, like, now this is actually starting to get kind of nice. The only thing I'm looking at is the comment and the source. So if I could say, like, hey, build me a node based on this comment and the source. And inside, like, you've got some state, but the state is basically just, like, what's the current open block? Like, in fact, the source, I'd only need to pass that in once. Like, it's basically at that point just, like, this is just a generator. This is basically just a generator at this point. Huh. Let's let's get this back to a point where tests are passing. Um before I before I step away and grab a drink of water or something. What are we so mad about here? Inconsistent with previous Oh, because I'm not returning anything. That's basically it for, like, returning a new node, right? Because what I'm thinking is that when I'm going through and parsing out the text... When I'm going through and parsing out the text, which will be the next, next step, is that I'll take all these nodes and I'll transform them to pull the text out and turn that into operations. Um... When that happens, then I'll I'll replace it in place. It'll it'll be you've got a data flow and you're going through the data flow and cleaning up nodes, and that'll also be the place where like I prune out old nodes that don't need to exist, organize, update like links and stuff between them, um, and build that sort of JSON structure. What am I doing right here? If previous type equals code, like, okay, get rid of you. So finally, we've got if type equals block, and this is the simplest one. Because it's literally just if... Um, not uh, if open block return null does that seem fine all right, so I do have to clean up a whole bunch of stuff, but we have build node, which checks all this stuff. We have open block, which I'm going to put a little bit of documentation on top of so I don't forget what I'm doing here. In fact, this is the perfect place to use. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it totally is. These are both the perfect places where I would want to use a block like this. Say var previous equals null. Now that's getting tied together by new lines. But maybe it shouldn't. Like, if, what if I do something like that? That's kind of ugly. 
it's kind of ugly from a documentation standpoint, and maybe I don't want to do that, but like... Nah, there's no need. Whatever. I'm not going to think about documentation this much. Like... In fact, like, I probably wouldn't even want this to get... Like, I'm, I'm just going documentation crazy because I'm trying to think about how the tool works. But this type of documentation is so internal that I wouldn't even want it to get parsed out. Um, I, <laughs> I'm just in this mode now where I'm like, oh, I want to document every little line. Um, this is not... This is of no use to anyone who's not specifically reading the source code. Um, it's not telling you anything about... So I wouldn't even want those comments to get parsed, actually, I don't think. Maybe, I don't know, we'll come back later and think about that stuff. Um, so this will return you back your node. Get rid of this. If you get through all of this, you just get null back. Um, where is node being created? Like, why would I? It's not. Yeah, okay. Cool. So, for each of these... We're going to build a node, comment. Um, we are going to... Are we parsing this out inside the comment? Am I actually slicing this? I do get the index, and I do return the type. Do I actually remove it from the text of the comment itself? Um, yeah, because like that's the same thing. Comment.text, I'm going to be iterating and, and transforming that as I go. So I literally, yeah, I literally do want to basically say. At the very least. I want this stuff down here to be spliced. I want the node you get back to be a sliced version of the text. Even if the comment itself, the comment itself should be constant. I don't want to modify that. means all of these things do also want to have a location inside them. Here's an interesting question, actually. Because I do want to be able to point to a, lo a location in a file and say, here's where the, the comment is. But how does that work with multi-line comments? If I do this, and then I do this, What's what's the location of this comment?
I'm actually going to make an executive order, and I'm going to say that the location of the comment is here. This is the location of the comment. You're appending stuff to it later, like true, but if you opened up the source file and you were like, show me this comment in the source, you'd want to start at like your main block, and then you'd want to like read through and grab the other stuff. The only reason you'd start at the end instead of the, the, the front is because you want to quickly get into like the stuff that it's talking about. Um, so I'm actually gonna say that location this way is fine for right now. And I do need to parse the string and I don't want to modify the comment, but um, I do want to get a drink of water, so I'm going to uh, do that for right now, just and so I can get tests passing for right now. This is naturally all very, very ugly code, but um, it's terribly practical for the moment. And again, we're all gonna, I'm gonna come back here and clean this up tomorrow or, or even tonight. Um, but cool. Cool, cool, cool. We no longer need this whole node thing up here. Um, so this is very, very much going to change. Um, I'm not going to be defining stuff this way anymore. Um, but for right now, because we don't want to make too many changes at once, let's sort of retrofit our old model back onto this.
Um, what am I missing here? I'm missing a root node. Let's give this thing just a hard-coded root node for right now. Again, this structure is going to change because I thought about it some more and I want to lean heavily into this idea of using pure parsable JSON. But um, for right now, um, now I will be extremely surprised if tests pass. But let's just see what happens when we run them. That's, that's all we're going to do. We just want to see what happens if we run npm test right now. Okay, things things blew up. Comment.text.splice is not a function. So I've I've done a number of bad bad things. I've been a very bad person. Um. <laughs> all right. But that's not crazy. Why are we saying comment.text? Should be. Unless comment.text is not what I'm thinking it is. Sometimes I get my keys mixed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy crud. Um, it certainly is a string. Oh, splice splice is not a method for strings? How have I never Well then what the heck? Splice isn't that useful for arrays. I could, I use this a lot, don't I? What, do I only use slice on, do I only use splice on arrays? What the heck? Oh, no, I'm an idiot. Okay. It is it is just literally slice. Okay. Yeah, all right. And splice does actually make Whoa, my test pass. Holy crud. Wow. All right, that feels good. Um <laughs> So we are at parity with the previous one. Now, just because test pass doesn't mean this code is bug free. Because we are currently not checking anything inside this entire code block up here. This entire section of code right here is not being tested for anything. We are not testing append. Um, but uh, all of this stuff appears to be fine. Um, and leading, jumping through and, and 
ripping out. I was worried at some point, like, it's really easy to get errors with new lines inside something like this. Um, but that looks like it's just kind of fine. Um, so from this point, what I need to do is make sure that code blocks actually are working. Make sure that appending is actually working. Um, and then we need to parse out IDs and links. And um, nah, before, before we parse out IDs and links, I'm going to switch to the new JSON structure. Um, and that'll be helpful anyway. And then we need to parse out IDs and links. And then we will have a fairly comprehensive set of functionality. And I can start actually like going back through and cleaning this up, switching things out for constants, that kind of stuff. Um, wow, I am fairly happy about that. All right, um, so I'm gonna guess that this that this went a little bit longer. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this. Um, go and grab some water, some stuff, and uh, I'll be back in probably the next video.